Hey, this is Mikey with another After Effects tutorial. Today we're building this dynamic lower third. And what is neat about this is it doesn't matter how long these names are, it's going to dynamically change the scale of this lower third to make sure everything fits properly. Now, in order to make this work, it's using a feature that's built into some of the newer versions of After Effects CC. So if you're not on Creative Cloud, I am sorry this is not going to work and you're just going to have to manually um, adjust things for different um, size text. But if you're on CC, you can and it's a, an expression. Um, let me just go in here and don't worry, we'll build this all from scratch so you can see how to do it. But it's called source rect at time. So basically it's the rectangle that surrounds that layer um, and how big it is, right? So this is source rect at time um, you know, at what point in time and the width right there. So that's kind of what it is. And we'll go through this uh, one by one and build this from scratch. Before I do, I want to talk about something um, fun and amazing. There's a website called Udemy.com. I actually have two uh, video courses on Udemy. And they have been pretty impressed with the course that I've done and uh, how much traction and how much attention it's got. And so they've contacted me and wanted to do a massive sale with their website. And so what we're doing from today, Friday, through Wednesday of next week is everything on their site is only $15. Doesn't matter the price. You see this one right here? It was $197. Now it's $15. This is $75. Now it's $15. $199. Now it's $15. So every single course on their site that's over $15 is now only $15. And, um, you know, there's some that are free and there's some that are less than $15. But all the more expensive ones are only $15 using a coupon code and a link that I will provide for you. It's down in the um, description below. And you can just click on that and come on over to Udemy and check out all the many great courses. There's hundreds and hundreds of courses. Um, I'm just kind of browsing through the ones in design. Um, you know, we can learn about Blender. That's always cool. I've, I've always wanted to learn Blender. Um, 3D printing, all sorts of stuff. And this is just in the graphic design, but there's tons and tons of courses on Udemy. So if you're wanting to learn more, have some more kind of a higher education than what you can get just through YouTube, um, then definitely go check this out. Okay, let's start with a brand new composition. Lower third. I'm going to use just shape layers. I'm going to use a rounded rectangle. And I'm going to make this bar that comes in long enough to go all the way across the entire composition um, because that's I'm going to move the position instead of scale it in order to make it the right length let's go make it a red color okay and then let's get those stripes on there that kind of came down on the side and again I'm going to use just a rectangle tool this time, let's do make it black. And a separate shape layer. So it's a different shape layer. So this first one, call it a bar. And this second one will be stripes. So make it bigger than the bar uh, height wise. If we go into the path, Let's make it 40 wide. Let's line that up. And then let's duplicate that twice. And then just scoot it over so they all line up one after another. Let's come in and change the opacity on these. Now I'm doing this down in the shape layer so that I can do them all individually. Shape layers can get a little bit confusing at times, but just think of them as uh, folders or pre-comps. So I'm going 80, then 60, and then 40. Okay, we got a little stripe accent there. Now let's add in our text. First, scale it up to the size we want. And then the second one will be called last. And let's change that from a thin font to a bold font. Now, before we um, put in the expression to make sure everything fits in just good, let's do the animation. So let's 
get this to where we want. And I'm going to just add a drop shadow to these under layer styles, drop shadow. Copy that drop shadow and paste it on the next one. Okay. So that's about all I'm going to do uh, for this. Let's again, let's animate it now. So first we animate the bar. So I'm going to select that layer, hit P on the keyboard, brings up the position, keyframe that, and then let's just move that keyframe off to the right. And let's have it come on like that. Let's maybe um, highlight both those keyframes and easy ease them. And let's go into the graph editor. Let's take that last keyframe and pull the handle just ever so slightly to the left. Let's maybe spread those out a little bit. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now, um, with these stripes, I want them to animate um, kind of sliding down one after another. So in the contents, we've got one, two, and three rectangles. Um, in the transform, after that bar slides in, we're going to keyframe the position. So slide it up, keyframe position. Let's go forward four frames, and then slide it down. Go back two frames, so there's a bit of an overlap. And then we're going to the next rectangle, and we'll do the same thing. Keep in the position, four frames, back two frames, and we'll go to the next one. Okay, now here's a trick. Instead of using a track mat, um, there's a an effect called set mat, which means I can come up here, if we go to effect, channel, set mat it's like using a track mat but it's through an effect and I come in and grab that bar layer and you can see it now cut those stripes so they fit only on top of the bar and I don't have to have multiple duplicates of the bar in order to do that I can just pick and choose wherever that want um, that mat to come from and I don't have to worry about where the layers are in my timeline pretty neat it's kinda of like nodal compositing that way Okay, now let's uh, just do an animation for the first and last. So let's go to the first and let's animate just the opacity. Bring that down to zero. I'm using the text layer animations. And then we can open up the range selector, keyframe the start, go a few frames forward, and then we'll do the same thing with last. This time let's animate um, position. Let's maybe have them go down. Go in the range selector, keyframe to start, and then bring that to 100%. But you can see with this, we're going to need to do that same trick that we did on the stripes. So let's grab that set mat. I'm going to just copy that and then paste it onto that last layer. Okay. So this is what we have so far, and that's a decent looking lower third on its own, but let's make it so it's now dynamic. And that's where we're going to use that source rect at time expression. And what that expression does is it's able to grab the dimensions of the text layer or any layer and bring it in. Um, it's a new feature that is only, again, working with the newest CC versions, 2014-2015 um, has it. So if you're not on CC, you're going to have to do this manually just by moving things around. Um, if you are on CC, you can create a nice little template that it's easy to uh, change the size. So first we want to make it so this last is dynamically moving based on the length of first. So let's bring the position for last. Option click on the stopwatch. And first I'm going to type value just so it will compile even if I don't have a complete um, expression written in there. So let's bring in the dimensions of first. So let's just say D first for dimensions of first equals pick whip first. And we type period source capital rect K 
capital A for at and capital T for time. And then in parentheses, we write time. And then we need to know if we want height or width. And since I'm going left and right, I want width. So we put dot width and with a semicolon. Okay, now if we take value, we add plus, and then in the square brackets, we put D first for the first value, then comma zero for the second, and the square bracket. And it says it's missing something. Oh, I accidentally capitalized the I in first. There we go. Um, now it moved it over. Um, but what we have here is if I look at the scale, see that scale is at 300, that scale is at 300. I need to um, adjust things according to that scale because the way it moves is, is if it was at 100, um, but it's at 300. So let's come into the position again, and then let's times this by, and we need to grab the scale. So I'm just going to grab it from the first layer, and then divide that by 100. So it'll be times 3.06 is what we're going to do. Okay, now you see here we had value. Well, it already had some value to this. So let's move this over just to line it up. And let's see how it works. Come in here to first. And it's looking like it's working just fine. Okay. Now we've got that moving. Now we need to have the bar behind it moving as well. It's going to be basically the same um, expression. So let's just copy that. And we're going to add some more to it later though. Go into the bar. Option or I'll click on the stopwatch for position. And let's paste that in there. Let's see what happens. Now, again, we need to move this to line it up. But I had keyframes set on that, so it made a new keyframe. So let's just grab that keyframe, overlap that last keyframe. We're going to have to go to the beginning as well and move that beginning keyframe over. All right. So if we come into first and make it a longer name, everything seems to move just fine. Okay, we got that first part right. Now... We want it to move as well when we change the last name. So right now it's not doing it. So let's come in and I'm going to just copy this first part of the expression that says D first equals all of that. Copy that, paste it, and let's change some values in here. Let's call that D last. And have that be last. And then all we have to do is take this where it says value plus D first. All of this, let's copy that, paste that again, and then in here let's change this to D last. Let's come in and one more time, since we used value, we can just adjust that value. I'm holding down shift so it won't go vertically, just horizontally. Move that keyframe over that last one. And move that. So what we have here is first, last. And let's check if I make this last name any longer. Perfect. Everything seems to be working just fine. Okay. So that is a dynamic lower third. And super easy to switch up. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure you go check out the sale over at Cinema Spice. Again, there's a link in the description. If you get to this after the um, sale is over, well, then that link will just take you to uh, my current courses that I usually always have on sale um, through YouTube. So thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.